So in the previous video, we looked at how we can represent regression trees mathematically, the model, and how we can um, write down the loss for training a regression tree. Um, in this video, we will look at the algorithm that we can actually use to build um, regression trees. So just very, very quickly, where we ended off last time, um, we have the model that's represented with this equation, and we're trying to do regression. So we're going to use a squared um, loss function. Um, and I um, explained that if I told you the regions, if we knew the regions of the decision tree, but we didn't know the values that's assigned to each region, then it's actually um, easy to show that the best thing that you can do is within each region to, for, within that region to predict just the average output value of the training items assigned to that region. The problem is that we're not given the regions. And one strategy could be to try and consider every possible partitioning of the input space, calculate the corresponding Cs for that partitioning, and then see what the loss would be. And then what we try and do is we just try to find the best possible partitioning and the values of C. Um, but the problem is that that quickly becomes computationally intractable. So we need a different strategy. Um, and specifically what we'll use is we'll use a greedy algorithm to solve this problem. So this is the algorithm. I'll just read through it quickly and then we will step through the algorithm very, very slowly. So what we will do is we will start at the top of the tree um, with all of my training items in one region. Okay. And then for each current leaf node, okay, for each um, possible feature XJ, and possible split point S, we will calculate the reduction in loss if we split at that position. So we will pretend like we're splitting and we will see how much does the loss get better if we did split at that position. So we consider all the leaf nodes, all the features and all the possible split points. And then from all of those options, we choose the best um, feature and split combination. Um, so in other words, the best a combination that leads to the biggest reduction in a loss. And at that point, we then put in a split. We decide we're going to split our data there. Um, we then create two new child nodes, okay, which corresponds to two new regions in our input space. What do you do next? You go to step four and step four basically says, okay, well, just go back to step two and repeat from there. Okay. And then again, we pick we consider all the leaf nodes, we consider all the features and all the split points, uh, we calculate the reduction in loss for each of them, and then we um, choose the best feature and split um, combination, we split there, and we continue to do so until the stop condition is met. The algorithm is called um, greedy because um, of this step here, where we're just considering the best current um, split. This might not be the best thing to do overall, okay? But we're just systematically always doing the best thing that we can at that point in time. So that's called a greedy algorithm. If you're not looking ahead that much and you're just looking at your current position and um, doing the best thing that you can at this point, then that's greedy. It's called a top-down algorithm because we start with all the data in uh, one um, pot, basically, with all of them together, okay? This will become a lot more clear when we actually, when I give you some examples. And it's called a recursive algorithm because of this step here. Uh, it's a recursive algorithm because we um, keep on repeating this process until some stock condition is met. Now that probably didn't make that much sense. So let's just consider uh, an example. Okay, so here we've got some training data points. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, training data points. Um, we've got two features, a x1 and a x2. Just to make visualization a little bit easier, for each of the training points, we of course also have a y value. That's a continuous number that we're trying to predict because we're trying to do regression. Um, and to make it easier to visualize, I'm just plotting y, um, the output, the target value, uh, as a function of x. Okay, so this training data point has that value of y, this training data point has that value of y, okay, just to make it easier. So let's pretend that we are running this tree growing algorithm. Okay, we start at step, step one, 
uh, where we have all our data in one region, which is exactly what we have here. So all the data is just together in this one region. So before considering any split, what would the loss be then? So before we split, split, what would be the value of our loss function? Okay, well, we know that we're using the squared loss. Okay, so we're going to sum up over our seven data points. Each data point has a target value. Okay, then we're going to square that. And what will be the prediction of our model? Well, if we have a model like this, where everything is just bunched together, um, if you remember from the previous video, what you do in a specific region, and you just have one region now, is you're just going to predict the average value of all the training points in that region. So this might, for example, um, let's just plot that there. Okay, so that's C0. Let's call it that. Okay, and that's the average of all of those points. And what we will do for any point, we'll just predict the average. Okay, so this will be the value of our loss. Okay. Now, let's consider what will happen if we split one of our features at a specific position. So as an example, let's consider um, splitting x1 at um, some position s, okay? And let's say, just for now, that the position s that we're considering is there. So we're just considering, if we decided to split here, what would the, what would the situation be like, okay? So, Let's just think about that. So if we did decide to split here, um, then our input space will be separated into two regions, right? You will have a region one on this side, and maybe we can call it a region two on this side. So we've got a region one and a region two, okay? If we decided to split at this position, um, that's what will happen. We can express that mathematically. We can say that R1 is all the points x for which x1 is less than or equal to s, okay, and r2 is all the um, values of x for which the first feature is greater than s. Okay, now here's my question, what would the value of the loss be if we did decide to split here? If we split, then the loss would be the following. Let's just think about this. So, what would be the value assigned to these three data points? From the previous video, we know that we will assign the average value of those three data points to the three points, okay? So, it's these three values, what, what, um, what is their average value? Well, it's just the average y of those three points. So, maybe it will lie somewhere there, and we can call that C1, okay? For these four points, Okay, what will we do? We will assign to them their average number. So let's call that, let's call that, uh, I don't know, C2. Okay, so if we split, what would the loss be? Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to add up all the X's um, landing in region one. Okay, and we're going to add up all their um, known target outputs. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the prediction. And what do we predict for all of them? We predict C1. Okay, um, so that's what we'll do for the first region. And for the second region, same thing. We take all the X's lying in region two, and we just take the squared loss from that prediction. And in region two, we predict C2. So that's what would happen if we did decide to split at, that, uh, at this specific position. Now, here's my question. Which of these two values will be smaller? Which one will be better? This one before we split or this one after we split? Which one do you think will be better? Let's just look at, look at it graphically. Um, so this loss here, the value of this loss is what? On the figure, it's the sum, okay, it's the sum of all my true outputs, my target outputs minus the prediction squared. In other words, it's this distance squared 
plus this distance squared, plus this distance squared, plus that distance squared, that distance squared, that distance squared, and that distance squared. Okay, and that would be the value before we split. That would be the value of that loss. After we split, okay, after we split, um, we have this loss, and that loss is simply this distance squared plus this distance squared, okay, plus this distance squared, plus this distance squared, this distance squared, that distance squared, and that distance squared. Which one of those two do you think will be smaller? Which one of these two conditions is better in terms of the loss? You can probably see that this situation will be a lot better. Okay. Okay. We could have also decided to split at another point. Okay. We could have decided to split at another point. So let's just continue this example. Let's say instead of splitting uh, here, okay, instead of splitting, um, splitting there, we consider it maybe splitting at this position. Yeah, so let's call that uh, S dash. Okay, what would be the situation now? Okay, so let's say S dash, S dash here, separates the uh, feature space into two regions, R1 dash and R2 dash. Okay, what will be the, our prediction within region one? Okay. Well, within region one, we will just predict the average value of these five points, right? And maybe that would lie um, somewhere here. Okay, so that's C1 dash. Okay, within uh, region two, we will again predict um, their average number, and that might be somewhere there. So that's C2 dash. Okay. Now, what will be the value of the loss be? In this um, setting, the loss will be this distance squared plus 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 that distance squared. Okay, the distance to the average number. Okay, now here's my question Do you think this situation is better or this situation? that we had before. In other words, is this split better? Yeah. Or is the split on the next slide? Yeah. Is that split better? Again, you can probably see that this split uh, is, um, is the best one. So maybe you can start to see how this algorithm works. So let's just step through it um, slowly. So what we do is we start at the top of the tree with all our, of our data in one region. In other words, we put all our data into one node. Okay, so that's the top node here. Okay, and then what we do is, for each leaf node, at the moment we just have one, for each feature xj and split s, we calculate the reduction in loss if we split at that position. In other words, we consider splitting x1 at this position, 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 at this position. Okay, and for each of those splits, we record the improvement in our loss. We also consider x2 splitting here, 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 everywhere where it makes sense. You consider splitting all of your features um, at all possible split points. And for each feature and every split point, you keep track of the improvement in the loss. Okay, and then what you do, after you've calculated all of those values and you keep track of them, then you choose the feature and the split position, which results in um, the biggest reduction in your loss. You choose that position and you say, boom, I'm splitting here. Okay, and then you create two new child nodes. So let's say that the, the situation we looked at with the blue and the orange split is actually the best. Then what you would do is you would take your root node and you would split it into two nodes. You will ask, is x1 less than or equal to s? And you split that uh, tree there. Okay, what do you do next? Well, you're now at step four, and then you say, okay, cool, go back to step two and repeat. So now you're in this situation, you've split the region into two, and now you again say, for each leaf node, for, so for this region and for this region, in other words, for this region and this region, within each of those regions, consider how you will split each of the features 
at each possible split point. Okay, and then again, you just keep track of how much the loss improves if you did split there. Okay, so you consider splitting here, splitting here, splitting here, splitting here, splitting here, splitting here. Keep track of all the um, J improvements, the loss improvements. And then in this region as well, you consider splitting there, 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 you consider splitting there, there. Okay, and then what you do is in step three, you pick the best overall split out of all of them. Okay, so maybe the best thing to do is to split um, based on X2 and you split at that position. Let's call it S. And dash dash okay so then um, this leaf node here this leaf node here corresponds to this leaf node here and you're basically going to ask is x2 less than or equal to s dash dash if that's true then you go this way and if it's false then you go that way okay uh, where this region here would then correspond to this leaf node here and you continue to do that okay until when? Until some stop condition is met. Okay, and um, that can take on different forms. I'll talk about the stop condition a little bit in in the next video. Um, but for example, what you can do is you can continue to split until your leaf node uh, contains a very very few training data points. So maybe you could say that my leaf nodes need to contain at least five training items. Okay, and I will split um, up to that condition. Or you could say, I'm only going to split if my improvement in the loss is big enough. So you put some threshold there and you say, I continue to grow my tree until I'm not getting a very, very large um, improvement in my loss. I just wanted to write out a little bit more formally the combination of steps two and three. So what you're doing is you're considering splitting um, your input space into two regions. Okay, so you're considering splitting uh, into two regions. Uh, R1, okay, and in that region R1, you will assign all of your training items C1, okay, and then you have uh, your other region, Xi in R2, okay, and in that region, you're assigning all of your training items C2 squared, okay, so that would be just within that region, the, the contribution to the loss due to that, um, due to that region. Okay, and what you're trying to do in steps two and three is really to try and find the J and the S, which makes this the best it can be. So you're trying to find the J and S combination, which minimizes this whole equation. That equation really summarizes steps, um, takes together steps two and three. That really concludes our discussion of how you grow um, regression trees. I should say again, I should call these things regression trees, but very often we just talk about using a decision tree for regression, okay, which is technically not correct, um, but that's sometimes just how we, how, how we talk about this. In the next video, we will look at some things that we need to um, keep in mind when we're using these things practically.